The same terrorist who plotted the October 7th attack on Israel is now the new head of Hamas. And with that, any chance of peace, any chance of the return of the hostages through diplomacy, all of that is off the table. Well, tensions remain high in the Middle East as Israel prepares for a major attack by Iran and its proxies. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant told a group of IDF pilots on Tuesday that Israel is ready to defend itself from an Iranian attack. Every day that passes, we improve our readiness, both in defense and in attack. In Beirut, Hezbollah Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah vowed revenge for the killing of his top commander and claimed that waiting to attack was part of his battle plan. Therefore, the Israelis want to end this situation. This standby situation is part of the battle. The Washington Post reporting that Iran itself may be reconsidering a major retaliation. In southern Lebanon, hundreds celebrated the selection of Yahya Sinwar as the next leader of Hamas. Sinwa takes over for Ismail Haniyeh, who was killed in Tehran last week. Sinwa, who plotted the October 7th massacre of 1,200 Israelis and kidnapping of more than 250, is Israel's most wanted terrorist, hiding in the Gaza Strip and likely surrounded by some of those hostages as human shields. IDF chief spokesman Daniel Hagari said Sinwa will take his place alongside other enemies eliminated by Israel. This is the only place we are planning for Yichis in war. With the Middle East on edge, former assistant to the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Arieh Lightstone, who is the current executive director of the Abraham Accords Peace Institute, says the Gulf countries are watching and waiting. Well, for the looming war that they have right now, they know that Iran has been the number one instigator of malfeasance across the region, not just was, but are and likely will be until the head of the snake is cut off. When our allies, the moderate Arab states, look at the United States of America and see our equivocation after October 7th, what are they going to do if we ever need help? And what that does is call into question the efficacy of an American alliance. Lightstone says as a result, these moderate Arab nations are looking east, not west. There is no doubt about it that each country in the region has reached out to India and China in more robust ways because they know that the United States of America under a democratic administration cannot and will not be relied upon. Yet Lightstone believes Israel is on edge, but he expects it to come out on top. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, our foreign policy is certainly blowing an uncertain trumpet, but what is the happening in uh, southern Lebanon ought to be a wake-up call for us all to hear ch crowds cheering uh, the election of Sinwar as the new head of Hamas. Uh, that's not happening in Gaza. That's not happening in the West Bank. That's happening in Lebanon. So you see the extent of this ideology, and it all goes back to Iran. What are we going to do? Are we going to continue a policy of containment, a policy of appeasement, uh, hoping against hope that somehow diplomacy is going to work. Well, when, when your opponent is so dedicated to the destruction of Israel, let us believe, believe them when they say that and, and realize negotiation isn't going to work here. Uh, the only thing that will work is severe sanctions making sure that the pipeline of money is cut off, that this ideology is, is resisted and resisted strongly in every single front you can. Otherwise, the moderate Muslims within the Middle East are absolutely looking at our actions. And, and if, if we don't defend Israel, our staunch ally for decades, uh, well, they're going to say, well, there's no hope we'll get help. So this is a, a crucial turning point for the Middle East. When will the war happen is the open question, and to hear from Hezbollah that they're intentionally delaying in order to keep the pressure on Israel. And when you hear Sinwar say, we have Israel right where we want them, uh, you understand this has been a long thought out strategy to have a two front, three front war. But before the war begins, try to stretch it out as long as possible so that Israel becomes exhausted.
and if they can stretch it out through a presidential election, uh, they probably will, just to see where will the United States fall. I hope on both sides, Democrat and Republican, we come to the realization we have to stand with Israel.